running out of daylight here, so I'll just kind of go over this quick. Uh, we'll call this part three of the Thai Cord Yard series. Um, figured you're tired of looking at pieces of paper. So this is the yard I'm setting up right now. And as you can see, I'm kind of in various stages of getting it put together. Um, little story back here. So as you can tell, it snowed and I wanted to make sure I got the fence posts in the ground prior to it freezing. But at the same time, I knew that I was gonna have to do a little uh, landscaping work, I guess you could say, a little arborist work. Because if this tree in particular ever came down in the storm, it would have damaged my fence. I mean, this branch goes right through where my gate's gonna be. That would have took out that line of fence. This branches over here would have took out this line of fence. So after I got my posts in, I decided to go ahead and drop the pieces of this tree that were going to affect my fence line. I'll drop the rest of it later, but this frees me up once I get it cut and moved out of the way to go ahead and start stretching my fabric or my, my wire. Um, another thing I did right before I dropped it is I made sure not to put these braces in until after it was dropped because here again that branch would have come right through there and knocked it out possibly busted it made more work for me uh so just real quick take a look at down this fence line here i've got a fairly decent walkway on the outside i'm gonna have to clean up a little bit of brush but when you're walking your potential tie cord site you want to look at your trees very closely because if you can see here especially that branch all that is is a way for a raccoon to climb up over and drop right down in without having to bother with your fence now i realize i'm using a four foot tall fence and i've got wooden posts that yes they can be climbed but the more you can do to make it harder for climbing predators, the better off you're going to be. Uh, another thing, yeah, see this line here. I'm going to have to drop a bunch of branches coming down here because they all lay over top of the fence line as well. Um, I don't like trees being particularly close to the fence line on either side if I can help it. But... If you can't help it, you just got to clean up those branches. Uh, a couple other things here. You can kind of see it right past those two electric fence posts. There's a depression in the ground. So I'm going to have to bring some dirt in and level that out because you don't want a pit in the area that uh, get all muddy, you know, in spring rain. Um, one of the nice things I like about this spot as well is I've got a good mix of sun and shade. So during the summer, I can move my birds to the front of the yard here where they'll be shaded actually quite heavily by these maple trees. And during other parts of the year when they need more daylight, I can move them to the back half here, which is more open. Um, I do plan on putting some types of shrubs along this northern uh, tree line just to help with a windbreak for the winter um, partially to keep the wind off but also that'll act as a barrier for the blowing snow because otherwise the snow is going to stop at my fence line and drift and once that cold north wind hardens it into a crust the coyote could just walk right up over top of the fence like it wasn't even there but um what else Another nice thing about this yard is the majority of the length runs east to west. So my lines of barrels will be, more of them will be facing south, if that makes sense. Uh, if I did my math right, this yard will hold 48 tie cords. Um, here's another tip for you. If you're planning on raising say 50 roosters, make a yard big enough for 100 barrels. Part of that is because you're going to need room for your stag pens and also it makes 
relocating and uh, moving your birds around a lot easier because you don't have to throw a bird in a holding pen and then move another bird and then move him back. All you got to do is move the entire yard to the empty barrels that you already have sitting there. So if you do that twice a month, you know, when you mow the area that's empty, it helps you keep up on your mowing. You don't have to worry about birds freaking out when you go past them with the mower and running out in front of you. And, uh, you know, it helps to give the ground a break as well. So if you wanted to lime your ground or something like that, you could do that. And, um, you know, the birds will be off of it for at least two weeks. Uh, one other thing, and again, I don't have a dog. I need to get a dog, but that's further down the line. I do have hawks, I do have owls. So the fact that I have so many trees in this yard is potentially a problem. Um, I'm gonna have to really watch what I do with the birds. More than likely, I will have to lock them in the barrels at night. And uh, also more than likely, I probably won't trim the spurs on my birds, on my tie cords. Typically, I only trim the spurs uh, when I'm going to be taking them to shows so the judges don't get their hands stabbed or for the brood pen or if the spurs get relatively long. But if you have an active bird, those spurs tend to stay short and sharp and that's their natural defense. So I figure why not let them have it, you know, give them a chance to fight back if something decides to try and take them on. But that's all I got for tonight. And I'll keep adding more information to this playlist on tie cords in the future. Thanks.